we have another couple other measurements we need to do in here. We need to measure how worn this blade is, okay? We need to measure how worn a bushing is that's inside this. So if we turn, if I turn this around, you can see there's a bushing in here. What does this bushing do? It locks the blade to the, to the bearing or to the blade support. So if you can see here, I, I can move this blade on the support. See how that support is moving? That movement right there is that bushing, that pin and bushing. So we have to measure how much wear we have in that bushing for the health of that bushing as well. The other thing we're going to measure is how much movement there is of this blade within the rotor groove. And we, we're going to do that when the when the finger is directly inside the middle of the ro rotor. So we're going to check to see how much movement, if I grab this blade, that's how much movement there is on there. That's called backlash. This movement is called blade float. So we need to measure those to see the health of this blade. But again, this blade has to be set properly within the rotor. So when I say this, the center of this V between these two fingers is in the center here, that means on the back side, one of those fingers is directly in the center of the rotor because there's 11 blades. Or not blades, but fingers on the blade. So we're going to measure how much movement there is on that. So let's do the backlash first. Okay, so what I've done is I've set up on the end of this blade, just a little bit in from the end, halfway down it. So we're just in probably a quarter of an inch or maybe not quite, eighth of an inch. Okay, so what we're doing right now is we're measuring how much movement there is of the blade inside the rotor. So the finger is sticking right inside the rotor. We're measuring how much back and forth movement there is on that. And we're going to measure this back and forth like this. Now I have to be really careful that I don't start to turn the rotor. So it needs a gentle touch. That's all I can say is. So at one end, I've got four thousandths of an inch. The other end, I've got one and a half on the other side of zero. So that brings me a total of four plus one and a half. That's five and a half. So today, five and a half to six thousandths, roughly, of movement there. I check it against my chart. It allows between 8 and 12, so we're less than 8 thousandths of an inch. So the tolerance is 8 to 12. No problem. We're less than that. That's okay. A brand new machine will have zero. So there's a little bit there, but we're good to go with that. Now we're going to measure what we call the blade float. Okay. Again, we're measuring that, that bushing movement. Okay. This dial indicator doesn't really work well for that because it only goes up to from zero and I've got 15 at the end of the end. So a full scale is 30 thousandths, okay? I could do it that way, but it's using the scale. Now it's gonna, gonna have to go to a full rotation plus. I know that blade float is a lot more movement. It's probably gonna be something, somewhere between 30 and 45 thousandths, okay? So this isn't gonna work for me. So I'm, I'm down to, let's see, I'll, let's see, I'll put it at zero. Again, I'm only moving the support. 35 plus, let's say one, 36. 36 there. Thirty-six. So what do I check here? It says up to forty-five. So I'm within tolerance of my blade float. So I've measured the wear of that bushing. So later on we'll take a look at the bushing itself. But 
We have now taken the wear measurement of the blade, the bushing, the bearings, and the main rotor bearings. We have one measurement left, and that's the shelf clearance. And that's measuring how much space there is between the blade and the shelf inside, which is your, the shelf is the dividing line between high and low pressure in the compressor.